on September 20th, 2017, Hurricane Maria devastated the American territory of Puerto Rico. A month later, more than a million residents still lack running water and many are forced to drink from streams that could carry potentially lethal diseases. Through our fundraiser, the photography community raised over $40,000 for water purifiers. We traveled to Puerto Rico with the Salvation Army and Michael the Maven to distribute them. Hey everybody, I'm Michael Andrew here in Puerto Rico, Caguas. Tony and Chelsea Northrup are coming in today to help support the water filter program with many very generous photographers who have donated. I'm gonna go pick them up at the airport and then we're gonna to go to UPS and start picking up the filters. Just picked up Tony and Chelsea. We're headed to UPS to pick up the water filters. They just arrived, a bunch of them today. The UPS facility has been destroyed basically, so we have to drive around to this back parking lot to try to pick them up. Mike sent me a message on Twitter. He had heard that I had family in Puerto Rico, so he asked me if there was anything he could do to help me. I had already heard that all of my family was okay, so I said, you know, what can I do to help you? What can I do to help the people of Puerto Rico? And we brainstormed a bit and we decided that water filters would be good. So uh, I started emailing different water filter companies and asking them if they would get involved. Just sent out a bunch of emails and I got a few back. Um, the first filters did not get approved. So I went to Water One with the Pure to Go filters. Look, we got our, we got our filters. So Wait, these have eight. to go in there. We can get it. Woo! I'm here to tell their story and I'll share photography and video tips along the way. I gotta warn you, the sound is gonna suck because everybody who has one is using a generator and the lav mics kept getting in the way of people moving boxes and stuff. For gear, I brought the Nikon D850 and I shot entirely with a 24-70 F2.8VR. Honestly, I missed all the best shots because I couldn't stop helping people. But also, these people deserve some level of dignity and not everybody wanted to be on camera. By the way, this van was provided by FEMA and the shipping was provided for free by UPS. I found it just amazing the way the government, commercial and nonprofit organizations all worked together to get these needy people food and water. So the hurricane hit basically from Umacao all the way across the island diagonally up through here. So the whole, the whole island was basically affected. We are here. We, we've gotten some reports recently that these are the areas that need help because everybody's coming here. Yeah. In Utuado, has been cut off until just a few days ago. So we have a, we could, could do a delivery here, and after the delivery, scout the area, find some water filter opportunities. Coming here was incredibly important to be able to see where the filters were going and how they were going to be distributed. There were problems that I would have never been able to solve had I not been here, and one of them was that I opened up the filters and saw that the instructions were nearly impossible to read. They were super small, the pictures were terrible, they just weren't clear at all. The thing is, we don't want to go through all of the trouble of delivering the filters and then have people not know how to use them, you know? What if they open this up and it's just too confusing and then it's too much work and, and they don't bother uh, filtering their water, so we're just trying to make it as simple as possible. Tony used his super skills of taking something complex and boiling it down to their most simple points and we remade directions with pictures. So we had to print them out, and fold them up and put them in each water filter packet. And the pajamas, folding instructions. <laughs> Are those your pajamas? Yeah. We did all of this in one night, one long night. This is my room. That's my bed that I'm staying in. And our bathroom is through here. I guess we need to flush with these buckets here. Pretty, pretty good setup. I have never done anything like this before. And it's amazing. You walk into this place and people are working sun up to sun down to make a difference here. Something many people don't understand is there is an impending water crisis here in Puerto Rico because up to this point, most of it has been supported with bottled water and there are more people drinking water than can be shipped in. So this is going to reach a critical point where water is becoming harder and harder to find. So this is where the water filters come in. This is a filter kit that we want to distribute and it represents 600 gallons of clean water per kit. It equates to about a million bottles of water that we're going to distribute without the plastic containers being littered or whatnot. So cost effective, environmentally safe, it's a better resource than trying to use bottled water. 
I kept changing my angle to try to find a clean background. Notice that I used a slow shutter speed to tell the story of the motion. So we load the vans up every morning with as much food and water as we can. Because it's space and when we get out there, people are gonna want it. So this van will be filled from top to bottom with water and food. Um, between a couple vans, we can get an extra thousand meals out there. That's 32, right? Yeah, this is 32. Okay. And then the and rest is food. food. So the real challenge with Puerto Rico it's a geographical issue because it's isolated on an island. You're only flying things in and you can only ship things in. There's a backlog with the shipping because there's only a few ports, so everything has to be flown in. If it was one part of the island that was hit, no problem. The rest of the island can come help out. The problem with Puerto Rico right now is the whole island was hit. Everybody was basically ruined. The power grid was erased, essentially. And so everybody's hurting and that's the problem with so many people spread out on a big island is you can't reach everybody quickly and it's, it's a logistical nightmare. We're doing a delivery now and we have to hide the truck so that the neighbors don't come see. We're doing a drop off of all this food. We only have enough for so many people so we don't want to run out and have a huge crowd and have it get out of hand. So we're hiding the truck back here and, uh, and then we're going to hand it out to people one at a time. What I'm hearing is they had a delivery about three week, three to four weeks ago and nothing since, which makes sense. I didn't know what to expect when we went out handing out food. Like I said, I've never done that before. Um, and it's just such a great feeling to be able to show up to a neighborhood where people are struggling. You can see that they're in need and it's a great experience to see that you're helping people. Mike had told us about a family that he'd found the day a few or a few days prior that was really hurting. So we went up into the hills and the whole family was sick. They all had eye infections and they looked pretty miserable. We asked them to show us where they were drinking from and they brought us down into this valley uh, where there was just a very small stream and there was runoff coming down from where there were chickens and dogs, so you know, that you're getting, you know, not very clean runoff into that water. And they were just taking it straight from the water source and drinking it and wondering why they were all sick. That was just really powerful to see that these filters could not only get people clean water, but make sure that they're, they're not getting very, very ill, especially when they don't have easy access to medical attention. Are you drinking this water? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. These are, these are from photographers from YouTube because they care about you guys. So one of the challenges with water filters is making sure that the people who need them most get them. We saw people at a water oasis on the side of the road and we decided to pull over and see if we could convince them to use the filters. Now it's safe. Some of them were hesitant to use the filters, and at that point, we kind of felt like we had to demonstrate that if me or Chelsea are drinking out of the, this water source that's not clean, the filters actually work and are safe. Okay, if you need it, there it is. Okay. If you can get it in stores, drink it in stores. Okay. But if you can't, use that. Okay. okay. Here again, I moved to put the subject against a clean and contrasty background. The drone told a story I couldn't from the ground. It provided context and a super, super wide angle. Every storyteller should have a drone in their backpack. I thought we were gonna raise maybe $500. I'm so moved that you raised over $40,000. And that money will go directly towards getting more people the resources that they need. Because the struggle is not done in Puerto Rico. This might go on for years. Success. How many uh, filters did we give away? I think it's about 70. That's a lot of water. It's 43,000 gallons of water, basically, that we just gave away. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who contributed to the campaign or supported it. These water filters can save lives. Thank, thank you. you. That was awesome. Give me five, give me really five. This is just the beginning. We're getting more filters approved. We're working to make the filters easier to distribute and use. And with your help, Puerto Rico will rise again. Give at sdp.io slash PRwater.